Well, good morning, everyone. It's absolutely a delight to be here uh, at the IBJ Tech Power Breakfast, because technology is power. But sandwiched between two very kind introductions and your breakfast, <laughs> I want to compress this infomercial to be as succinct as possible. Now, I know a lot of you are thinking, uh, but hasn't Purdue University just already got a slot on the infomercial? And if there's another one, why isn't it Mitch Daniels? <laughs> As in Daniels School of Business. Uh, well, I always say, as I would say in my family, that you get what you get and you don't get upset. <laughs> so this is what you get. Uh, however, uh, I did prepare 85 slides, so uh, <laughs> I, I just need the first slide to be up there to be up here, or oh, up there, great, wonderful. Well, this is better than my face, for sure. Now you're wondering, perhaps, so what is this particular commercial about? Well, I want to tell you that your university, for our state, continues to work hard to co-generate talents, careers, and knowledge together at a scale with a quality and affordability that is second to none in the United States. So here is that triangle there. Actually, it's a circle. I'm sorry, it's too early. <laughs> I was told that, Mo, you got to wake everybody up. Uh, but I need to wake up myself first. So here, here's the, tr here's the triangle, here's the circle of three things, workforce, jobs, and innovation. And you need all three of them work together. I've been to many different counties, pledged last summer to visit within the next 12 months on 92 beautiful counties of our state. I've been to about 40 of them. And I see different challenges and opportunities, different local conditions. But universally, they all said that we need more jobs and workforce together. Companies, large and small, are not going to bring the jobs to a particular spot without knowing there's workforce. And the workforce are not going to bring gain and stay and come here unless they know there are wonderful jobs and high-paying career opportunities awaiting them. You need the two to work hand-in-hand hand together. And you need knowledge. When I was serving our country in the State Department, one of the things we had to grapple with was the chip shortage. And how do we onshore and reshore the entire semiconductor supply chain from gas and material to design, to tools, to manufacturing itself, and to packaging afterwards? Now think about packaging. It is labor intensive as it stands today. There's a reason why the US global share has reduced to four or even now 2%. And it is the lowest margin of the entire supply chain. So the only way to sustain, in addition to the CHIPS Act by Senator Young and other colleagues bipartisanly, is to, in the long term, use technological breakthroughs to change the economic equation. I know nerdy engineers like myself, how dare we talk about economic equations? Well, I do believe that the only way to change economic equations, such as going from labor intensive to innovation intensive, such as going from low margin business to higher margin innovation, is through technological breakthroughs. And that's the way to bring advanced packaging and heterogeneous integration and 3D packaging to our country, even though I have no idea what those terms mean. But, but I do know one thing, that your university, Purdue, continues as we have in the past Daniels decade and continuing into the future decades, generate knowledge along with talents and jobs. And I said, we're doing that at a scale with a quality and affordability that is second to none in the United States. At the scale, there's no other university in America today among the top 63 research universities 
that is producing more STEM talents than your university is doing today. Out of 50,000 West Lafayette students, 38,000 are undergrad students, and 68% of them are STEM students. And this percentage was only 41% when President Emeritus Daniels started 10 years ago. Now, I don't know if you can do math. I cannot in the morning or any part of the day. But I was told that if you multiply those numbers out, it's about 26,000 STEM students among just the undergrads. And we have also master and PhD students. This is a bigger number than any other top research university in America. We also have the kind of quality that you cannot find easily anywhere else. Look at the top four, the final fours. In addition to men's basketball, we also have <laughs> top three, still part of top four, right? Uh, we'll get back to number one later this week too. Uh, <laughs> we also have the top four agriculture college in America, the top four pharmacy college in America, top four engineering college in America. Our online engineering rankings, number two in the United States, and our graduate research ranking engineering is number four in the United States. And we have as many engineering college undergrad and grad students as the top three combined. The quality of our faculty, our students, is astounding. I just met a future potential boilermaker. I don't know where is seated right now. Right there. Well, you keep working hard and you'll be a boilermaker engineer one day. Uh, and with affordability. I'm not sure how long the tuition freeze can last when you become a freshman, but... <laughs> how old are you again? You are 11 years old, fantastic. Uh, we've got three children, my son is 10 years old. Uh, and well, depends on the economic condition and the physical strength of your university. But the Board of Trustees just approved as we examine the situation year after year, just about two weeks ago, the 12th straight year of tuition freeze at Purdue University. We are proud of student access and success. We are proud of value. We are proud of higher education at the highest proven value. Now, what is the rest of this chart? You see a little map over there. Why don't I start from the top left corner, and then let's walk our way together to where we are exactly at this moment this morning. And this is, by the way, the exact way that I drove down this morning. So I woke up in the morning, West Lafayette, Indiana. Over the past three years, under Mitch's leadership, we created something called Discovery Park District. It consists of three parts. First is the Discovery Park Research Institutes and Centers, such as the famous Burke Nanotechnology Center. When Secretary Blinken and Secretary Raimondo jointly visited Purdue University to celebrate CHIPS Act and what universities like Purdue can do to advance our country's digital future, they were there at the Burke Nanotechnology Center. That's been there, and we're going to keep growing that. And then there's the second part, which is a residential, lab to life. Students and working professionals live there, and we're turning that thanks to AT&T and many others partnership, into a living laboratory where we get to deploy the latest 5G or 6G or Wi-Fi 6, as well as autonomous and other technology to commercial deployment ahead of any other smart cities in the country. And then you've got the third part, which is the tech park, especially around hypersonics, aerospace, transportation companies ranging from Wabash to Saab to Rolls-Royce to MediaTek to Skywater, Skywater Technologies announcing last summer a $1.8 billion chip fabrication facility at DPD. So if you are a Boilermaker student, you can wake up in the morning 
And you can turn right to go take our semiconductor degree program courses, the first of its kind at scale in the country. Or you can turn left and you can do an internship or co-op with Skywater Technologies. It's a walking distance. And that's exactly why we are generating workforce and jobs and knowledge together. Now, if you start driving down along 52 or 65, I don't know how much you love trucks, but if you love them a lot, then you would like to drive down 65. <laughs> and in about half an hour's time, you will be exactly at the midpoint of this 63-mile stretch, the Lebanon Leap District. Now, Governor Holcomb and Secretary Chambers, they can do a much better job to describe the exciting potential and future of Lebanon Leap to all of you. Now, I can only paraphrase what I have heard with great excitement and shared enthusiasm that we're going to have a first-class and large available land and infrastructure to attract companies such as Eli Lilly to continue to invest, or new ones, companies large and small, to invest in our state. And then you keep driving. You're going to pass Weistown, Zinesville, you're touching Carmel, and you're in downtown Indianapolis. I'm proud to continue, as we are continuing, in every dimension of the Mitch Daniels decade in creating Purdue University in Indianapolis. Purdue in Indy is not a regional campus. It's not a separate campus. It is an essential and integral part of our flagship West Lafayette campus. Except it's not walking distance. But this is where we think our future lies. And the mission is very simple. The Purdue University in the coming years and decades will invest in, partner with, and together grow the technology industries in central Indiana. That is our hope. That is our goal. But we cannot do that alone. We need all of your help. As you can tell that this comes to the homework part of my short lectures this morning that we need all of your support and your partnership. Stronger, deeper, broader than even before, so that we can together grow that technology industry in Indianapolis and central Indiana. So imagine, in the coming years, we're going to bring those tens of thousands of technology students to our capital city. We're going to bring hundreds of those award-winning top four in America quality of departments and faculty in STEM disciplines to our capital city. We're going to bring the kind of co-generation of workforce, knowledge, and jobs that we have demonstrated in West Lafayette, but to our capital city, and make it 10x bigger so your company can hire from 10 to 1,000, if you want, perhaps, of talents into your workforce so that we can attract many more companies, so that we can create many more new companies because of the mix and the connectedness of the talents, workforce, and knowledge. And that is our pledge to you that your University of Purdue will be here in our state's capital, Purdue University in Indianapolis. Along this corridor, if you zoom out with me now then, it's about 63 miles if you believe Google Maps. I have no reason to doubt it. And you don't need chat GPT to tell you how exciting this is. I'm sure AI would have picked the same name as Mitch, as Governor, as all of you. Tech point, 16 Tech, CICP, State Chamber, the Technology and Innovation Council, and all the private sector friends here would have picked. This is a tech corridor. This is a hard tech corridor. Every such corridor in the country needs 
a particular specialization where we are the best in America in doing that. And I think of hard tech as technologies that you can touch, where bytes meet atoms, where what you touch and what you code merge. For example, semiconductors and microelectronics. For example, aerospace and transportation and logistics. For example, ag and biopharma manufacturing. These are the pillars of hard tech. And Indiana will be known for the hard tech corridor. They say that if you have two dots on the map and they extrapolate, that's called execution. If you have one dot and you extrapolate a corridor, that's called imagination. We started, we together started with no dot on the map. And we started drawing a corridor. Some call that hallucination. <laughs> I love hallucination. And this morning, not to put you back to sleep, let's dream together about the biggest dream and your University of Purdue is right here with you. Let's create this hard tag corridor for our state. Thank you very much.